Hello, everybody. The anatomically correct trim team teaching education accountability something something unknown of in the horse world mentoring see that's what you all will turn into teachers educators that hold yourselves personally accountable for the results mentors to others that is the object of this to create an international group association of people who really are educated and understand the true foot of the horse and you know in this in this method of trimming it's it's never totally perfected because as long as there's something else to learn we're going to have to learn it uh, as long as there's something to change in order to you know make it better for the horse we're going to change it no matter what it is no matter how right we think we are you know, as you see, as more people do this tram and get a get a foundation in the understanding of the foot and of the anatomy and do this tram, we're going to get more data. We're going to see patterns and we're going to be able to change things that need to be changed. What I want to do in this session is I'll, that's one thing I want to talk about, about changing things and about how sometimes you can be doing the right thing. But for the wrong reason at the wrong time, because see that I learned that this week from a gal and she was she's saying, you know, it's never right that a horse is sore. I'm yeah, it isn't. Something's wrong if after every trim that horse is worse than when you went up there. I I have a confession to make it at many times. I myself have been a chronic over trimmer, especially back when I was trimming out the heels, because as you trim the heels out, it makes the toe look long. So you got to make the toe shorter. And you'll find this a lot of times people will be giving you advice on your hoof and you've trimmed the heels out and, uh, they're looking at that foot and saying, well, the toe is long. No, the toe isn't long. The heels are short. It makes the toe look long. So you can, you can over trim the toe if you do that. And the horse is sore. Um, she showed me trim her horse's foot. She said she trimmed her horse's foot. He was sore for a week, but I could look at the foot and I knew why the horse was sore. And I wanted to explain that to you, even though I don't have a picture of the horse's foot. I will tell you that on the horse's foot, what I saw, you could really see, you could really see, like, here's his foot, okay? could really see the wall. But then you could really see a sole ridge here quite a bit, okay? And the problem was, I could tell that they'd been rasping into the sole ridge, which is probably probably my fault because I tend to do that and I have quit doing that except a little bit in the toe so I don't have a picture of that foot but I'm gonna tell you I'm gonna explain this to you then I'm gonna have you watch a video I'm gonna explain to you the soul and about 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 the correct soul that you're supposed to have and stuff like that now I tend to rasp into the soul I have quit doing that Okay, unless it's like uh, uh, something right up in the very center of the toe, and I'm bringing the toe back a little bit. I'm going to explain to you why I started rasping the sole. I was doing the right thing at the wrong time. Let me find my pictures here. Okay, now can you see the horse's foot? This is, of course, wild horse foot. Okay, these are the feet off a mare that Pete Ramey, a wild mare that Pete Ramey got out of a cattle guard in. California in the winter so they were in really good shape and able to be dissected and still fresh looking okay I want you to look at this foot here now what you have here's your wall but you you can't see it real good right here but from about here to here this is sole ridge right around here okay so you really have a flat platform that's about this wide counting the wall which is rounded up there and the sole ridge, which comes out to here. Do you see that? Now, I had this image in my mind that the horse should have this. Unfortunately, I was kind of rasping down the sole, and sometimes I'd gribing the sole. 
Okay. All right. So, so you have this nice big sole ridge, but you see on this horse, this sole ridge is an inch thick. And until your walls, your dorsal walls are correct, and the the horn tubules are in alignment with the inner lamina, you've got everything back. You're not going to get that sole to grow that thick. Okay. Because why? Because the wall. The okay. Because the wall grows down, connects with the sole about here, and then that one piece grows down to here where it then exfoliates and, and can be, you know, worn or exfoliated off. See, now look at this. Now do you see the sole ridge around the perimeter of this foot? It's the same width or even a little wider than a horseshoe would be. Now, if you had an inch of sole here, th this wall, it has to be just perfect to retain the sole a specific way, anatomically, structurally correct way behind the wall. Then you can get that sole to maybe grow up to an inch thick. If you even had a half an inch to three-fourths of an inch, that's still pretty darn good. See, that's when you get these feet that can go over any kind of terrain. You know, but how to get it there and how to maintain it until it gets there. Look at that. This is the toe of that foot. Now, I want you to see something. Look at the horn tubules. You see how they curve around like that? You see, a Mustang roll is not just hoof wall that has worn off in a bevel. Okay, you cannot... You cannot, with the RAS, make a Mustang roll. A true Mustang roll is where those horn tubules are literally curling under the toe. Imagine how that wears. The hardest of the wall continues to, continues to grow like this and support the sole. It's a modern, it's a marvel. It really is a marvel. The true Mustang roll. Now, now look at the sole right here, how thick the sole is. Now, you haven't got a huge, giant callus here. That is, a, that is the sole ridge, okay? That thing has to wear away just like everything else. All right, um, otherwise the foot wouldn't function properly. Okay, and that's why a lot of the stuff they taught us in barefoot trimming, oh, never touch the sole ridge, and yet you're always trimming the heels. And so what happened to a lot of people is they wound up with these long, big, thick toes and no heel with a negative palmar angle. You see how that happened by telling people that? Don't touch the, the sole callus, and yet, oh, you got to take those heels down and set the frog down. See how that is going to mess people up, okay? See, I know that because it did it to me. Okay, this is the same foot. Look at the thickness of that sole ridge there. Now, the sole corium ends right here. This would be sole corium in here. This is the sole ridge on that horse, and this is about an inch thick. Here, here you have it again. Okay. Here, I, I cut out different rulers to put on this. Look at here. From here, it's an inch, about an inch thick right in here. So now look at look at the lamina. See the lamina line? Okay, now the, the horn tubule that grows here starts up here that grows on the outer wall. The horn tubule, there's a papule here that feeds a horn tubule. From the time that horse is born, this is where it's going to be. And it grows down this way. And see the lamina line there? And it grows down here. Now look at the, the, the sole tubules. Look at the alignment of the sole tubules with the, with the, um, with the lamina here. So you have this horn tubules that start once here and there and there and they're in alignment here and they connect, you know, to the inner part here. And then they all grow down right here, and then they connect with this piece of sole. They cannot connect with any other piece of sole. They connect with this piece of sole. And then from there, they grow down to the ground together, and you see how that's all in alignment? That's how you get a thick sole ridge. And so now 
these, as I've shown you, you can take this hoof capsule off in one piece just like a shoe. Now, as long as these are in alignment with, with this lamina, with the horn tubules that are growing from the little papules on the coronary band here and all growing, you know, I mean, in alignment, that, 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 okay. As long as this is all in alignment, you have what's called weight bearing equilibrium between the hoof capsule and the inner foot. That is, they work as one. But as soon as you trim the heels out and sets all these at a different angle like this, then that changes the whole weight bearing equilibrium between that hoof capsule and that inner foot. Okay, and that's when you start having problems. Okay, and when you have, have, these are supposed to be at this angle here, and when they're at this angle, it's, they're naturally going to want to grow and push forward, and they do grow and push forward, and then they'll take this dorsal wall here, and they'll push it forward too, so that you can never get a fully good connected wall like you should have. So the whole object of doing this anatomically correct trim is to set the foot up to remodel back to this form that it was supposed to be so that um, you can have this, this hoof capsule and the inner foot in weight bearing equilibrium and everything in its place and growing correctly and working together. Okay, we're going to go back to what I was saying about, about a sole ridge on a foot. Until you get the walls correct, okay, except for minor, taking off minor toe, sole in the toe, or if you have, re if, if a horse has a lot of retained sole, that's different, you know, that, that will deal with that another time, but I'm talking about, you know, most horses have flared walls with thin soles, you know, and no heels, okay. Um, now, if you do have uh, some sole in the toe, you, like I said, we'll learn to, to deal with that. That's where measuring your dorsal wall, look here, from the hairline, just a little over three and a half inches to the ground here. See there? And look how it recedes here. Remember, I told you you're going to have it less over here. We're going to talk about the sole here. Okay, so I want to explain about how I'm doing different. Uh, regarding trimming uh, the sole. I don't rasp into the sole at all anymore. I rasp down to the level of the sole, but never past that now. And I do not scribe the sole out because what I'm finding is that, that as you do the trim, as you do the mapping, and then you're going to add uh, the mapping of the dorsal wall in last, you know, after you do the overall trim, then you will check it by uh, mapping your dorsal wall. You know, um, why is that? Well, because these inner feet are only so big. So there's only so much sole. You're going to want uh, only so much wall from here to here. Now, you've got to be able to tell if you've got wall jammed up to here and no sole at all down here say you got to be able to tell that too you know how much excess wall have you got between here and here that's where um, reading the growth lines reading the hairline uh, if the if the wall is jammed up the hairs will be pushed up as well it pushes the hairs up that's another way to tell on that let's see here so reading your growth rings do they go up like that things like that so you could have a lot of wall. You could have four inches of wall and still uh, no sole down here. Now, if you look, how much sole did she have, really? You know, she had more before I trimmed this foot, trimmed this foot uh, after it was she was dead, you know, and I rasped into some, just into some of the sole here. Now, this has taught me, if I had this do, to do over again and I was trimming her today, I wouldn't do that. I wouldn't have trimmed her the way I trimmed her here. Okay, so if you're you're trimming your horse and you're rasping into the sole about that far, and he's tender or sore 
for two or three days, then that's why. That's why. So, you know, that's one thing. I'm totally quitting. I no longer rasp into this the sole at the toe. Now, if I have a big, ugly ridge, I'll show you what I do in this uh, video coming up, how I just will kind of uh, trim that up a bit. The only thing, other thing I'll do to the toe is if the foot tells me it wants to come back because everything shifted, you know, I will come back into the sole this way. So again, only taking out retained sole, that would be like sole that had grown that thick, that would be retained sole. But if I had up to about that much sole, that's not too much sole. See there? But of course, this horse, this horse didn't have any. So, and you're, um, I'll show you some pictures um, of how I, I have changed this. Now, why did I think I could get away with rasping into that soul? Okay, because of all those wild horse pictures I just showed you, where you could clearly see there was a soul ridge, right? You could clearly see on them horses there was a soul ridge. It's not that correct. But here's the thing. They had an inch of soul, so they could have that. Do you understand? They could have that. This horse doesn't have an inch of soul. Um, she needs every little teeny bit she can get. And, and then as this all came together and she gained another half inch to her wall, at least there, when, the, when everything was right, when the heels are restored properly... See, this, doing this measurement is going to tell you that. It's all going to slowly develop. And all this, as soon as the heels got correct and grew more, she'd grow more sole up here, too. So what I'm doing instead, I'm going to show you something here, how the sole grows. Okay, now you know that everybody thinks concave, right? Everybody thinks the, cola, the sole is concave and... They've been telling us for years, yeah, you got to have that nice concave foot, right? And I think I've shown you this before. Okay, so you have your wall here. Okay, and then you have your, your inner foot right here. Now the sole corium lips up over this on the outside, and so the sole actually grows like that. See? Of course it's growing, but it's at the but it's growing down like this as well. Okay, now technically the true shape of this is like this. See that? is round like that, okay? But because the wall here has a hold of that sole and it grows down, it gets to looking like, it'll look like this. See there, you can't see that it's a convex sole ridge there. See, because a little piece will always attach to here and grow like that so it makes it look it makes it look like it's concave see there but in truth if you're to just to take a little bit of this dead sole off right here you're gonna see a little ridge here like that so this wall the dead sole has come with the wall right right into here Okay, and if I come in here and I trim off some wall and some sole, I'm going to have this number here. See my little flat spot? My flat spot there? Okay, now the more I trim, you see how the wider this is going to get? This is my sole ridge. But be, and it's round because see, the, the, the shape of the foot is round, but because I rasped it down, I can make it flat right there. You see that? 
Okay, but in truth, its true form is right like the, the end of the foot here. And that's all the way around the whole perimeter of the foot. You've got this shape all the way around there like that. What happens is we wind up and we start out with just a little bit here. And so what we want to do is when we rasp down these walls, is we just want to take it right to the edge of that. One thing you do have to be aware of is then uh, after a few days, a lot of times if you had exfoliatable sole, that could wear out and the horse will be walking on his wall. So you might want to check your horse in two or three days too so that you're, you don't, you're not setting him up on a situation too where he's totally walking on the wall. But what we want to do is create kind of a... Uh, a situation here where he's got enough wall supporting this weak sole until this sole can grow more and everything comes together. So when you're trimming these feet, you want to trim just up to the end, up down to the sole. And that way, that allows the wall to support that sole, but it's still um, allowing that sole to grow and you're not... Uh, over trimming into this sole ridge before it's ready. See, now if you got your whole foot right and you got a big thick wall, goes down an inch and you've got plenty of sole here, it could build up. You could get too much. You know what I mean? Well, then you could come in there and rasp that down some. You know what I'm saying? Because you're going to want to maintain this at a certain certain length because a lot of times when when the, all this comes together and they start developing this sole it'll get away from you the other direction so in that case it would be good to trim this down and you'd have this big nice thick sole ridge here see there i wish i had just that much on my horse <laughs> i think i'm getting there okay i'm going to answer a couple questions it says even with the sole or just a little above for a thin-soled horse. You you could try a little teeny bit above for a thin-soled horse, but like a, a width of a dime or a penny, not much. At least let's let's go with that. And you know, people are going to be doing this trim, right? They're going to be trying different things. They're going to see what works. At the same time you're doing that, you're going to want to be paying attention to your walls, what's going on with them. You know, are you getting some jamming, stuff like that? Pam, seems like trimming level with the sole makes them sore. Okay, well, let's talk about that. I have found since I restored my heels that it doesn't, but that it, it did more before my heels were restored. But again, maybe it's one of these things, Pam, like right thing at the wrong time or wrong. Yeah, you know, you're doing the right thing, but it's at the wrong time. So maybe you need to do a little something else. You know, there's no reason why we can't modify these depending on the stage the horse is in. What What do you think of that, Pam? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, Pam says, since most of us are restrained heels, I guess we need to experiment with different things. Yeah, I, I think that's a good idea. You know? Um, but I will tell you, yes, I noticed that once you start getting heels, you start getting more sole, and they are less and less sore all the time. Tender, you know, tender-footed is what I'm talking about. Not sore like hobbling, but you can just tell they're tender. They can be tender-footed. So their feet aren't right yet anyway, you know. Yeah. Answer Jody Elwood's question, which is, so the dorsal wall mapping is strictly to help you know how to prioritize what section of the wall needs a stronger role. No, that's not what the dorsal wall mapping is for. The dorsal wall mapping is to help you get the correct um, length and shape to of the wall to follow the inner foot. Okay, the, the mapping part you're talking about uh, was this part, you know, where you have the different here, um, then this part of the wall, I bevel different than this part, and someone's, okay, Jody, did that answer that question? See the shape of this foot? Okay, see how this goes like that? Okay, and see how the wall goes like that? Well, if you look at a lot of these feet, 
we accidentally let this piece of the wall get too long and it comes out here like that. Okay, so the dorsal wall mapping was to start preventing that and get the, the hoof capsule shaped like the inner foot. That's, that's what this, and, and it's also because I kept running into people who had way long toes with thick retained sole in them. And so, and this mare, she, she at that time retained sole. This is a back foot though, but in her front feet, she retained a lot of sole, got real thick and wide and huge up here. And so I was trying to figure out, um, how, you know, I was looking at an inner foot one day and I went, huh, look at the shape of that thing. It goes like this. It's less here. Okay. So if you have, you know, three and a quarter inches and you have three and a quarter inches here, something's wrong or three and a half inches, you know, and, and, and that your hoof wall is here, right here, but up here, it's all clear up to here. You know, you got these, you'll see rings in your feet like so something's wrong. Yeah, so that you know you have wall jamming, that's when you're looking at your your rings. You want to look at your at your growth rings here. See, hers were getting pretty good. You can still see they went up a little bit right here. But a lot of that too was the heel still needed restored in this to bring all this up. See, cartilage is bent down. Needed to come up. Louise. She asked, what if there's a gap in there between the wall and the sole? Uh, Louise, do you mean right here? Is that what you meant right there? Gap? No. What, what, what gap are you talking about? Because, see, a lot of times people have a gap right here. See that? They have a gap here. Like you, you would try and get a clean white line all the way around, or you would try and get a level foot, but it dips down here. Can you explain what you meant? No. <laughs> okay, that's all right. That's all right. Think about it. And and uh, if you figure out a way to explain it and you want to ask, uh, feel free. Okay? Rhiannon asks, what about the technique used for scribing to bring the forward or distorted souls back? Yeah, I'm just, I don't know. I, I'm just not convinced of that. I, I think... Just the mapping and then bringing the toe back like this to where it was supposed to be is is what you should do. You know, let that, because that whole wall has to come back and it, that it's the wall coming back that brings that soul and retains that soul. Now, the wall, the wall is a retaining wall more than a weight bearing wall. It can only bear weight with the soul and not distort when the soul is correct. So it's a retaining wall. It retains and supports the soul. Okay, when it gets stretched out, it pulls the soul out and then then uh, the soul gets thinner. Okay, because it's stretched. White line is recessed. In the side, in the toe. Okay, I'm just gonna answer this one more question. Uh, now how about Rhiannon asked, how about scribing the white line in the bar, buttress, and heel area? Are you viewing? Okay, that's, I don't, I, to me, scribing is when you are literally taking soul out. <laughs> you know? Um, as far as cleaning up the soul and defining, that's different than scribing. Defining, like you can define things. But that's different than when I think of scribing, I'm thinking of when, boy, I can go up into that wall and I can just really take out some of that soul, especially dead soul and stuff like that. Okay, I'm going to answer this question, though, because this is an important question. What if you have pillars that are longer than the toe? How do you take them back? How do you make them follow the internal shape of the foot? It depends on what's going on. Um, it depends. Is it? Is it a pillar that has grown thick this way, this way, with lots of soul? Okay, then I could, if that was the case, then I could measure um, what the dorsal wall is, which, um, you know, you could start at three and a half inches. Let's say you have a wall that's uh, four inches out to here. Let's say you take that, the center tool down to um, three and a half inches. Well, then over here... You're going to go over two inches, mark, and mark a line down 
to uh, three and a quarter inches, okay? And then you're going to draw a line there. Well, then I can take and I can rasp that wall down, okay? And as I rasp it down, look at it. will It'll be this white line would be out like this. But as I rasp it down, it's going to come in and follow the shape of the inner foot, okay? Now, but that's just one way. What if I have very thin sole, but um, but it's still like that, okay? And I've got, got, you can see where it's raised up up here at the wall. Well, then what you do is uh, you're going to leave, you're not going to bevel your toe back to the white line, but you're going to take and you can bevel this pillar back to the white line, and this wall will just move out within a few days. You'll come out here and you'll see that place where you beveled back to the white line is not there anymore. And you've got hoof wall there. And it can even be um, passed like it's grown, but it ain't growth. What it is is this wall will literally move down and out of the capsule. This wall has the ability to move independently. Okay. This wall has the ability to move independently like this. See, if you leave a piece of wall here long, pretty soon it's going to just edge its way up here like that. So that's why if you take this back to the white liner, you know, sometimes you may have to do a combination of this. But when I first started trying this, I was making a horse sore because I wasn't realizing that a lot of the excess wall I was working with wasn't coming down out of the foot here. It was actually wall that was pressed up in the foot here. And so um, uh, and she had, they had a long, long, sometimes they can be long this way. And anyway, that's, that's a little bit on that. Rhiannon says, uh, so rasping into the sole and pillars to shorten pillars is okay as long as you don't rasp. Sole and toe. Well, you can rasp sole in the toe. You can rasp it back this way. Okay. And you can rasp it that way if you've got a correct amount of sole to work with. And so that's what we're learning. If like this, this toe, this horse had no very much sole in her back feet is I'm going to have you guys watch a video. Uh, it's about an hour long and, uh, it's three trims that I did on Valor where his whole foot shifted. I'd been doing the same trim uh, for a year, same exact deal, toe was in the same exact place, and a month and a half ago I felt his digital cushion right in here, and it was all squishy. And then um, a few weeks ago, or a week or so, whenever it was, I felt it again and it was hard and firm and what what were what i saw happen on his foot and i understood after these trims it was a discovery was that the frogs stay here the frogs stay when you trim the heels out of these horses you see how that heels pulled down it pulls this frog down and reduces the frog stay a lot of times to nothing and so when you're uh, regrowing these heels and they're coming back up, this frog stay is going to grow and, and grow up into the foot right here. And it's going to pull this whole frog corium back and up and reposition it in the right place. And then you're going to have um, uh, a digital cushion that's in the correct spot. And your frog will be correct and your foot will be supported back here. So this is what happened to Valor. Uh, his frog stay pulled and grew and moved back and up and it shifted the whole foot. The whole foot. I had been uh, mapping him, had been trimming the toe back exactly where it spoke to an inch and a half for a year and it hadn't moved and then all of a sudden everything moved a fourth of an inch. And so I'm going to show you these three trims, and I do them all the same, except uh, in one of them I alternate where instead of taking the toe back 
to the white line here, I leave it, and instead I take both pillars back to the white line here and here. And that is to allow uh, the pillar to do some correction. So see, see how that would work, how you could alternate that to get this foot to moving, you know, one time. You do the standard trim where you take uh, the toe back to the white line, take the pillar down, but then back to the water line, uh, the quarter back to the white line, and then the heels, you know, you're, you're defining them flat. Okay, you can switch up on that, and you can kind of just take your toe down, you know, a little bit, or leave it, and then just take your pillars back to the white line and that's going to give room right there that if you've got any jamming or wall that shouldn't be here or wall that needs to come down and back that's going to help all that keep moving okay so i'm going to set up on this video here it's about an hour long 